Hi folks, and welcome back. I'm running a few errands today and there's a few things that I've just got to show. <laughs> I'm laughing already. So, uh, you know, first question. Oh God, the wind's catching the door already. How have you coped with the storms? How are your plots doing? Our back garden, it's not doing so well. Do you remember I said in a video just the other day? Thankfully, back garden's not too bad either. All of our fence panels have actually survived this storm, which is nice, always a bonus. But unfortunately, it's not the case anymore. This one came down and I've just had to prop a load of stuff up against it. It's actually splintering in that corner now. Ah, oh, not ideal. We've got a few kind of old fence panels that were on their way out. They just have not survived this storm. And this one, well, this is just the neighbours, but yesterday there was just stuff blowing absolutely everywhere. Garden is a bit of a mess. The worst bit is the grass. So we've got the dog here now. And where it's been so wet, she's just completely turned the grass up. So hopefully your allotments and your plots aren't doing too bad. I've not actually been to the plot yet since Storm Henk. <laughs> weird name since Storm Hank hit and first I've got to do a few errands because it's the 3rd of January today so it's chilly time I'm about to record the chilli special later the potty mouth chilli special so hopefully you've seen that already if not link in the description but just down here I've got this year's seed selection and this year I've done way more planning than ever before normally I just kind of look at the varieties and go yeah I like the look at that and that and I'll plant that this year is way more in depth we've got the shelves a backup the grow light Time to get sowing the chili seeds very soon. I'll be doing a bit of a, I think maybe a little more of a dedicated kind of grow along chili series this year. So if you want to grow chilies along with me, I'll sort of be doing a bit more of a how to, that kind of thing. But I've run out of compost. So we're dashing to a local garden center. It's actually a nursery, but they've got the silver grow in stock. And this has been the talk of potty mouth recently. Now, I mentioned that I like to use silver grow and so does Jesse. It's like, foolproof Melcourt silver grove really really good and it's out of stock absolutely everywhere I know Mark has just paid a crazy price for some some seed sowing compost and if you're looking at getting silver grow or the Melcourt compost there's some extortionate stuff online so you should be able to get it somewhere for around six or seven pound maybe eight pound a bag if you're seeing it for like 16, 15 pounds, don't buy it. That is a rip off. Maybe it's online or, or something like that, but you can find it cheaper. I meant to say as well, if you're after the Melkor stuff, go online and find out where their stockists are because they're not at most garden centers. I'm not sure why. It's a little bit hard to get hold of. There was someone on the Potty Mouth Discord who went to like five different garden centers and it's worth always giving them a phone call or an email, ask if they've got it in stock. The local place I emailed, it wasn't in stock online, but they do have it in store which is why we're going and thank you Jess for driving <laughs> oh it's there outside this place looks so cute we've never been here before this is St Margaret's Nurseries in Fareham if you're local and look at this they've got a fully full, full on polytunnel loads of Melcourt compost outside I'm like a little kid in a candy store give us some Instagram poses Jess <laughs> this is actually quite good for a little winter, a winter showing. It's really nice actually, most of the time that you go to garden centres in winter, it's all just Christmas decorations. Mm. And there's a little, we've just gone past a little free section where they've just got loads of plants for free. Jess has gone to get a trolley, which is how you know it's a good selection. <laughs> I'm just looking, I've been looking at their polytunnel, it is incredible. And I'm very glad to see there's no storm damage here. Go on, shout. Shout oh. for the camera, you got to shout for the camera, Jess. <laughs> these so I'm gonna buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Jen just saw these and went, oh, sweet Williams. And I said, oh, I wasn't recording, do it again for the camera, but now she's shy. <laughs> One pound and I feel like we tried to sow sweet Williams, didn't we? And they I all- I tried them like four or five times. And every time they said, absolutely not, so. I think Steve used to do loads and loads of sweet Williams. So, uh, 10 for 10 pounds. I know. That's pretty what good, they're there? chunky. No, I'm are these like... ones, what are these? They're wallflowers. Ah, uh, pretty. Yeah. We've just come into like the main greenhouse area and it's so good. I didn't even, I can't believe this has been around the corner for years and we've never visited. This is like the same feeling as when you walk in a polytunnel or a greenhouse. And uh, I don't know, most of the garden centers around here, you don't, you don't get this kind of proper greenhouse feeling. There's so much stuff just, 
<laughs> just keep stopping every two seconds. Like, oh, we gotta get this. <laughs> Jess is horse spotting. <laughs> We've even got a bit of sun. Oh, amazing. So here it is. This is the good stuff. I recommend this with just, you know, every fiber. It's the best peat-free stuff I've ever found. Really consistent. Here we've got three for 22, which Jess tells me is about seven pounds, 20 something. <laughs> just tried to work out the maths when I was paying for it and got it completely wrong. But yeah, we're gonna get about 12 bags of this stuff. Big thank you, as always, to the patrons. It was this time last year, actually, that I realized, well, and maybe February, when I realized that my compost that I'd planted all of my chili seedlings in was just absolute cack. So I had to kind of ditch all that and upgrade to this stuff. And it's been happily ever after. <laughs> Hi folks and welcome back again. So another, it's the next day, it's tomorrow, I ran out of time, uh, and another super quick lunchtime visit. And I've got the good stuff in the back. There's uh, three packs for me and three packs for my dad. It's this late Christmas present because we couldn't blooming find it anyway. So it's a little bit late, but it'll be really nice for him to start all his seedlings. And I wanted to come up just to A, drop it off, B, show you a few bits on the plot and C, check on it after the storm. And driving in, I must say, I was pleasantly surprised by the state of the rest of the allotments. Not too much has come down, no sheds have come down or anything like that. A few bits that have blown around, a few compost bins and lids and little bits and bobs, but nothing, you know, structural as I'm looking around. The main thing I was quite worried about is uh, whether or not I'd lose a pane or two out of the greenhouse. And thankfully, it all looks fine. Although I've said that before, I came up once and thought it was all fine and then realised about an hour later that there was a polycarbonate panel missing. But no, thankfully, it all looks good from here and the polytunnel too. I'm not too worried about, you know, the winds actually damaging the structure, but the concern is whether, you know, something's going to get picked up and chucked into the side of this. And thankfully, it's okay and this repair is holding up. It's getting a bit kind of crinkled and a bit weathered, but it's still there, it's still holding up just fine. Nothing has disappeared from the beds either. All the matting is still in place. Ah, very good. This is looking a bit different though, isn't it? And that's because I've been very, very busy in the polytunnel. One, two, and three. Now, I think last year I actually slightly overbought. So this year I've just gone for six and hopefully That'll see me through with the peppers because I've got a lot of spent compost that I've kept hold of too, which I can show you, look. It definitely still looks a little messy, but so much has changed in the polytunnel. During my last video, I was sort of saying, one of the next big jobs that I really want to do is a big polytunnel sort and tidy, and I did it. I did it off camera. I spent about four or five hours and it's looking so much neater and tidier. There's still all of this in the corner, but it's kind of a little bit of organized chaos, you know? All of these 30 litre tubs are full of spent compost. This is mostly from my chili peppers. So that's all ready to be used in various ways next year. I've got a few watering cans. I like to, you know, there's still a few bits that I'm watering in here. So I like to bring the water up just a few degrees so that when I'm watering, it's just a little bit nicer. There's a few pots, obviously some cardboard to kind of get rid of. There is as well at the back here, <laughs> This is one of those things that I've just left, but there's some potatoes in this tub and I'm just going to see what they do. <laughs> and then in here, I've got more bags of spent compost. So it's just another kind of slightly convenient way. I was trying to figure out, you know, what do I do with all this compost? And I thought, hey, I've got bags lying around all over the place. Oh, I should really go and shut the boot in this rain. So that is just fantastic. Obviously, we've got a collection of tools and the hotbed in in waiting <laughs> over here. Random bit of cardboard, you kind of ignore that. I'm just putting that down for a bit of weed suppression. My last remaining chili pepper. I've moved the garlic in here as well, which is starting to move. We've got some good growth on some of these. They're very inconsistent, but this one looks good. All four of those are the garlic this year. And over here, I found some leeks. <laughs> I found like a really old pot of leeks. And I thought, you know what? Just bang them in the ground, see what happens. These were sown absolutely ages ago. I think maybe in April or May. <laughs> and they were sort of languishing in that neglected plant nursery, do you remember? And I found a few bits and it's just been kicking around in the polytunnel. I thought, you know what? I've got a little bed going on here now. Cabbages have survived nicely. So let's chuck them in and see what they do. But the real work was over on this side. And 
To be honest, it doesn't look that different at a glance. You know, I've still got kind of a few slabs just laid out, weighing down this matting. I think I'm probably gonna wood chip this matting just for aesthetic purposes. This is just weed membrane. And then later on in the year, I'm gonna have all my potted plants on here. But what I've done is got in here properly and set up my garden throne. <sighs> Look at this. It was a little bit controversial. I said, I really like the idea of having a permanent chair in here and a permanent kind of paved area, just nice and level somewhere I can always come and sit because especially when it's raining, like now, uh, it's just so good to come in here and just rest. It's the first thing I do whenever I arrive and I just, one of those things that was grating away. I was thinking about it for a long time, you know, should I do it, shouldn't I? And I've done it. I've set up a little chair. I've got a little table for doing whatever, if it, even if it's just having a cup of tea or lunch, uh, maybe for some sewing, you know, it's probably not ideal, but I can definitely start some sewings in here. And I found this little, this old thing we were gonna throw out a few years ago. It's just been sat in the shed. It wasn't really being used. And I thought, hey, I've actually, I can set up this and just get a few tools. It's so, it's such a little thing. It's such a small thing, but I spent hours. I've leveled all the slabs, I've got membrane all around the little corners, all those little tiny fiddly jobs that take a long time that I really didn't want to do. You know, I was really like, ah, oh, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. Um, but as soon as I did it, I was just like, ah, oh, yes, this is the stuff. And now, as far as I'm concerned, polytunnel is pretty much finished. The only thing I really need to do now is get some support structures in for the tomatoes and that kind of thing and get some floating shelves. But that's miles away, you know, that's for much later on in the year. There's a few other bits that I need to do before then. The main thing being this greenhouse. I'm feeling like, to be honest, I've got a bit of momentum and a bit of energy, and this is probably next on the to-do list. You can see down here, there's some bricks. And I've got a little message for you. Someone the other day called us fair weather gardeners. I would just like the record to show that here we are, me and Jess moving all of these bricks in the pouring rain. <laughs> it was tipping it down when we did that and it's raining quite heavily at the moment. So I would say I'm not the fairest weather gardener. You know, I do like to still get out and especially when I'm onto the big jobs like this that I don't film, you know, I'll be waterproofed up digging out this base. It's exactly what I did with that one. I was coming up every evening in the dark just for a few hours after work, <laughs> waterproofs on, kneeling down in the mud, and once I start it, I do quite enjoy it. And to be honest, pretty much my next big job, I do want to get my chili seeds sown. That's a, that's a proper big job. Last night I couldn't do any of this because I was on the Potty Mouth chili special, which was really good fun. I think that's going out Friday. So there's just a few little bits that are blown around, a few bits of random rubbish and that. So that's not bad from this lot of storm damage. There is as well a broken pane, which has been broken for quite a long time. And I've not been too worried because it's survived. It's been like that for ages and it has survived a few storms. But the main thing I was worried about is with the storms and if that was going to let air in or get blown out or anything, but it's not got any worse. So that's good. I am looking forward to getting this done. I think as well, I'll invest in a little bit of glass. There's quite a few bits I never really finished with this greenhouse. You know, there's like a little bit up here that was just some random plastic and some bubble wrap. This one needs replacing. There's a few bits of polycarbonate here and there. And so I think it'll be nice to do this greenhouse a bit of a better service. And one of the other things I am looking forward to about replacing all of this base is once again, one of those tiny little things, but where I'm going to flip these sleepers upright, um, you gain an awful lot more space in the greenhouse. So, you know, on each end, I've got these sleepers that encroach and it makes it really awkward with furniture especially because you just end up having a gap of unused space behind it. And as you know, every centimetre of space in a greenhouse is precious. It's more plant, isn't it? It's more joy. So there we go. Thank you ever so much for watching. An extra special thank you to all of my herb, <laughs> can't talk. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Puppeteer patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden and Andrew, your absolute stars. Hopefully I'll see you again in the next one for Chili Sewing. <laughs>